Take a look at the first video uploaded by user Mama Tech. Birthday to you. The mud flood is actually a worldwide earthquake. WWE wrestler glitches at live show. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Here we go. That looks man made. Like a tunnel was built under the tree. It's a very interesting thing that was the sapata. Se vede clar că este săpată de om. Nu este o brotă naturală. Probabil s-a căutat anumite minereuri pentru exploatare. Aici se pare că este capătul grotei Aici am dat și de ceva oase de animal Ce se poate vedea capul și oasele Aici se pare că este capătul grotei Se poate vedea clar că a fost săpat de către om Este artificială Nu este o grotă naturală săpată de apă Dar foarte interesantă pentru ce au săpat și ce au vrut să scoată de aici. Asta este foarte interesant. Sigur au vrut să exploateze ceva de aici. Nu este foarte mare galeria, dar... Foarte interesantă și foarte faină de explorat. Pe aici se poate vedea pe unde am intrat eu. Este un loc foarte îngust, am tras și pietrele la o parte ca să pot să ies afară. animal could have done that. Anybody know?
ies destul de greu pentru că e și locul mic. Dar într-un final ies cu bine. Aceasta este galeria de unde a venit. Iar aici se poate vedea locul, sunt chiar sub un copac, sub rădăcina la un copac. Ia uitați-vă și voi. Am reușit, dragi prieteni, cu bine să fac încă o explorare. Mă bucur tare mult că am descoperit locul ăsta foarte interesant. Nu mă așteptam să găsesc aici sub copac această galerie și să ne auzim cu bine la următoarea explorare. The mud flood is actually a worldwide earthquake. An earthquake that was so powerful that it liquefied the soil and civilization sunk. Destruction all around the whole realm. Think about like the Roman ruins. The Roman ruins had to be dug up. They had to be excavated. Easter Island and like the Moai statues There was a time where people thought they were just heads. And then it was very recently, people said, guess what, they have bodies. And in some cases, the bodies go 20 feet underground. Said so you go look around the Middle East, there's some gate in Iraq, ancient Babylon. The gate is like 25 feet tall and it's literally buried under the ground in the 1850s. They had to dig it up. That is insane. I mean, that is insane. Like go, go Beckley Tepe. I think they said they only excavated about 5% of this place. Again, 20 foot tall megaliths under the ground. So what the modern archeology span says, their best theory is somebody buried their own temple. What? Buried everything? Evenly. Like it's literally completely under the ground. It's not like a pyramid where people could actually cover up stuff and then there would still be a mound. It's like even across the world. Who, who does that? No one, never, why? Then you go to modern cities. And I think this is when it gets the craziest is there's stuff buried around modern cities. Evidence that basements are like halfway under the street. They're like, they're basements, but they're really not basements because there's windows that are kind of at ground level and sometimes slightly below ground level. And then sometimes they brick them up. Sometimes the street goes up with the building. Like the, the windows literally disappear as the street goes up. That's weird. There's underground parts of every major city around the United States. Underground Atlanta, underground Portland, underground Sacramento, underground Seattle. All these West Coast cities with undergrounds, highly suspect. They seriously have built their cities upon older cities. What we're told is the people before us were more primitive than us. Obviously they don't have the advanced excavating equipment and all that stuff. And yet it was very common back in the day to build things underground. Wouldn't it be harder to do that without all the heavy equipment we have now? But we don't do that now for some reason. When if you think you're more advanced than the other, the previous civilization, well, it'd be likely that you could do the same things, except you could do it faster and cheaper because you have better equipment, right? You got better tools, but they don't do that. So I think that's what leads us to believe that We are on the other side. We are on the wrong side of the peak of civilization. Just to say that it was only a single catastrophic event. How about the melted buildings? It doesn't have to just be mud flood or an earthquake. There could be a lot more. WWE wrestler glitches at live show.
glitches just keeps on coming. Did you see the cameraman? It looks like he was tapping the guy's snake. No, the back of the head. Maybe to reset. Yo, can somebody explain to me what the hell is that? Where is it? What is that, yo? That thing is not moving. That looks like a flying saucer. What is that? The thing is just not moving at all in the, in the sky. Or a drone. Come closer, come closer, you alien. Everybody seems to be seeing this sky anomaly all over the internet. It's like they're trying to meet a certain number of people to prepare everyone for the Blue Beam project, perhaps. Ancient India rewrites history yet again. Thousand-year-old caves have just been inspected by stonemasons and engineers, and what they found is going to freak you out. These are the Barbar Caves. There's five of them. Carved into solid granite, the polish is so smooth, it's smoother than machine-polished marble and slightly less than industrial glass, and 20 times smoother than industrial granite. Professional stonemasons were interviewed about recreating this project and how difficult it would be out of 10, and those were their answers. Most said it was impossible. A company called AGP, started by a former stonemason, scanned him with one of these. It's a spinning laser that creates millions of data points that can reconstruct the caves from the inside out with no distortion. Here are the results. The caves have perfect symmetry in the floor, ceiling, and walls. The walls are angled by just a few degrees. Why? Polishing with the aid of gravity is more than doable. That's what we do. Polishing a vertical wall and a curved ceiling, on the other hand, is... The walls have a perfect angle within 0.1 degrees. You can't even tell with your eyes. Why was this necessary? The acoustics of these caves are also ridiculous. Granite barely absorbs acoustic waves, and the dome at Sudama resonates at 74.9 Hz. This renders speech unintelligible in the chamber. Reverb is the time it takes a sound to decay into nothing. 60 seconds is the max my production software will go. Inside Notre Dame, it'll reverb for about 10 seconds. Sudama 62. Vapika is 70. When they were studying the acoustics, they discovered that the angled walls reduced the floating echo. The caves were rediscovered in 1785 by the colonizer dudes. No function of the caves has ever been discovered. The historical foundation is based on this crude hack job into the perfect walls. It says the absolutely perfect caves were used as a rain shelter. We can all agree that there was a lot of highly trained craftsmen that were needed to complete this. Yet we see nothing this precise anywhere else in India. How were they trained? How did they carve it with no electricity? Torches would suffocate workers if they didn't get silicosis. That's an incurable disease from inhaling rocks. Didn't seem like a concern. The only things we can compare it to are Nakshi Rostam, the Lycian rock tombs, Petra, and maybe a couple other sites like Kailasa. Kailasa was carved out of a single rock in traditional Indian style decorated head to toe. This has no decoration and emphasizes the precision. The Rig Veda puts a heavy emphasis on sound. So what were they used for? The clues are in geometry. If you want more clues, check out the documentary this whole video is based on. It's on YouTube and narrated by the lovely Johanna James. How about sounds? There may be frequencies that's unknown to man that can carve through stones. Unbelievable. The inventor of the L-shaped flood barrier is truly a genius. Although it appears simple, its design is both clever and practical. Each panel weighs only 3.5 kilograms and is as thin as a sheet of paper. Yet when a flood strikes, simply placing these panels on the ground effectively blocks up to 0.5 meters of water. The more water there is, the more stable the panels become. And even if the water flows over the top, the panels won't be swept away. Compared to traditional sandbags, this L-shaped flood barrier solves the problems of heaviness and inconvenient transport. Through its ingenious design, it uses the power of water to fight against itself, ensuring the panels remain firmly in place. Made of ABS material, the panels are not only strong and durable, but can also be arranged in various arcs to suit different environments, even allowing for the temporary construction of a swimming pool. How do you prevent heavy rains from causing floods in your area? This works to some extent, but still works nonetheless. Only it can be developed more.
After a while, we come across an ancient artifact that's so insanely old that it just does not fit into any of our timelines. That would be an out of place artifact or oop art, and we ain't talking about the blatantly fake ones over here. As I'm sure you've seen the Babylon Nokia, this Nokia looking cell phone with ancient Sumerian digits on it, which I'm pretty sure is just a prank. These old iron pipes found in China hold more validity to them, known as the Baigong pipes. Found near the Chinese Mount Baigong, which appears to host a pyramid shaped mound with a saltwater lake inside. And beneath the surface, of this area, several hollowed out, rusted iron pipes running into the mountain were uncovered, ranging from 18 inches in diameter to as thin as a noodle. What makes these special is that researchers have found the pipes to be over 150,000 years old after performing dating analyses on them, made during a time that our primate ancestors were supposed to be roaming the earth, far before any civilization began to form. This right here is an out of place artifact, and we've got a whole bunch of them that make even less and less sense as we go on. Humans didn't start working with metal until about 10,000 BC at the earth earliest, let alone developing a sophisticated underground water transport system like we see here. No one really knows where or how these pipes came to be, and they're found all around the area. Believe it or not, this is actually the newest Upart on our list, so shit just keeps on getting older from here. Just like up in the Ural Mountains in Russia, archaeologists found finely crafted microscopic metal parts 10 meters beneath the surface. They were embedded in rock that was calculated to be about 300,000 years old, making these bits around the same age. But the shapes are far too intricate to be naturally formed and they even tried pinning them on stray missile parts that fell from the sky. But they were much too deep in the rock to have been recently fallen and they had no other way of getting there. These pieces of alleged ancient nanotechnology were also less than a millimeter long and made of tungsten, a material commonly used in spacecraft. Also found deep underneath the ground in Rockwall County, Texas lies a wall made of rock. Known as the Great Wall of Texas, it was uncovered in a layer of earth dated to 400,000 years old, way before our primate ancestors were able to build such formations or even step foot in America. Some geologists absolutely insist it's a naturally occurring formation known as clastic sand dikes, but I mean just look at them. Measuring up to 40 feet in height at some points, you can literally see the shape of the bricks and the mortar holding them together in this wall. This is how real clastic sand dikes look like. Pretty natural, right? And this is the Great Wall of Texas. You be the judge, but clearly there's quite a bit of controversy around this one. Similar to the coastal artifact, what appears to be a spark plug or an electrical device of some sort. Encased in a geode that would have taken 500,000 years to form, and the only way an object can be stuck inside of one like this is if the geode formed around it. Meaning, this ancient spark plug would have to be around the same age. X-rays performed of the artifact revealed a metal cylinder inside with a screw-like ending, indicating it may have operated as a spark plug. Needless to say, our primitive ancestors were nowhere near developing such technology 500,000 years ago, and many pointed it to being a hoax. But the further back in time we go, the harder these become to explain. Case in point, this is the Nampa figurine, found in Idaho in 1889, 300 feet beneath the surface. A layer of clay it was found in was confirmed by the U.S. Geological Survey to be over 2 million years old. Esteemed geologist George Frederick even went to investigate the area. He confirmed that the red iron oxidation on the clay figurine matched exactly with the 2 million year old clay layer in a way that couldn't have been faked, making this a 2 million year old clay figurine. Way before any even remotely modern humans were thought to live on Earth, so was this even made by humans? There's a fossilized human finger that might point us in the right direction. So, a bit of background. The oldest recorded human ancestor fossil we've ever found is about 3.2 million years old, belonging to Lucy, one of our primate ancestors. But now, this fossilized finger right here was found in a Cretaceous limestone formation in Texas. Cretaceous meaning it's over 100 million years old. 100 million years. We're talking the age of dinosaurs right here, far before any proto-human primates were even close to roaming the earth. This was our closest ancestor during that period, so whose finger's that? Which gets even crazier with the Kaluga screw found in a meteor crash site in Russia. That's a metal screw embedded into an asteroid rock. And studies show that the iron and silicon of the screw and rock have physically fused into one another, meaning the screw could not have been a new addition to the rock, which was dated, get ready for this, 300 million years old. Other scientists tried saying this is actually an ancient sea creature called a crinoid, despite it being made of metal. Similar to this refined aluminum machine part found encased in coal in another Russian mine, accurately dated to 300 million years old as well, hinting at scattered remains of some advanced civilization that existed long ago. Which brings us to the infamous London Hammer, discovered in London, Texas in the 1930s. An iron hammerhead with a wooden handle encased in rock. Which let me remind you, rocks don't just form around man-made objects out of the blue. Objects embedded into rock or coal this deep are typically preserved as the rock forms around them over the course of millions of years as is the case with fossils.
minerals, which in this case was found in a layer of rock over 400 million years old, the alleged age of the rock and hence of the hammer as well. As with many of these, a lot of speculation around this one, but still interesting to think about a human tool over 400 million years old. The wooden handle is also said to have been partially turned into coal, a process that takes millions of years, which is nothing compared to the Kluxdorp spheres. Round, smooth objects with fine grooves around them found in South African mines. Many claim these are naturally forming mineral deposits, but still others that shapes and patterns like these are just not possible in nature. Made from a metallic outer material and a fibrous interior, 200 of these spheres were found in a mineral deposit over 2.8 billion years old. Back when Earth was still a baby, and apart from a few plants, life barely even existed yet. But then again, we claim life didn't exist back then because we haven't been able to find any evidence of it. Could this be it? One thing that comes to mind is that our history is not what we were told. The digital realms of TikTok aren't just for dance routines and viral challenges. Every so often a video, or in this case two, surfaces that sends the platform's users into a frenzy of fear and speculation. The latest unsettling trend sweeping the app is being dubbed as the birthday curse, and it's left viewers wondering if a seemingly innocent birthday celebration can turn into a sinister omen. Take a look at the first video uploaded by user Mama Tech. Birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Out of nowhere, the candles blow out, seemingly all on their own. Happy birthday. Now watch the second video uploaded by Renee. <laughs> The same thing happens. TikTok, known for amplifying content to staggering levels of virality, didn't disappoint with these clips. They've amassed considerable attention with users sharing and commenting in droves. The predominant theory? A ghostly presence, perhaps a loved one, was behind the mysterious candle snuffing. However, a more sinister interpretation emerged, pushing the boundaries of eeriness, the birthday curse. This freshly minted urban legend suggests that self-extinguishing birthday candles aren't just a spooky party trick, but an ominous sign of a curse or impending doom. Fueling the fire of this unsettling theory, a commenter claimed that someone they knew faced a tragic fate after their birthday candles blew out in a similar manner. But is there any veracity to this so-called curse, or is it merely the product of TikTok's flair for the dramatic? While the idea is intriguing, it's essential to approach such tales with a dose of skepticism. Many factors could explain the candle's behaviour, from drafts to the type of candles used. Yet the allure of the mysterious and the unknown is hard to resist, especially in the echo chambers of social media. Whether you believe in the birthday curse or not, it's undeniable that these videos have added an extra layer of intrigue to the age-old ritual of blowing out birthday candles. So what's your take on this new urban legend? Do you think it's just a gust of wind or something far more mysterious? Share your thoughts in the comments down below. Hey, if you're still here, please do me a favor and consider giving the video a thumbs up. I make videos like this every day and I would greatly appreciate it if you can join me again tomorrow. Thanks! Um, I don't care what you say, but these ancient Egyptian vases were mass produced and it's time to blow the lid off this topic. These artifacts were made from solid single piece igneous rocks, not iron molds or clay spun on a potter's wheel. Even the ones that look like they have a flat bottom can spin on a perfect axis. These things are not lopsided or unbalanced in any way. They are perfectly symmetrical, and you can see the different mineral grains in the material. They were definitely cut using tubular core drills and spun on a lathe. The precision is so high that we can only replicate this with CNC milling machines when cutting metals, not stone, due to the stones being an amalgam of hard and soft minerals. These sophisticated vases which can balance perfectly on their tips and have walls so thin that under the right conditions they appear see-through clearly result from advanced tooling and carving techniques they were crafted with an engineering prowess that suggests a level of technology far beyond what traditional history credits the ancient egyptians 
engineering analysis reveals that the production of these vases involved a sequence of advanced spinning tools. Initially, tubular core drills would hollow out the center of the rock. Following this, lades equipped with various bits would turn the exterior and interior to achieve the desired thickness and shape, with some walls being as thin as a peach skin. These tools could lock at different angles, enabling the creation of intricate designs and perfect symmetry. Archaeological findings, such as those analyzed by Petrie and Christopher Dunn, highlight the remarkable precision and sturdiness of these vases, which date back to pre-dynastic Egypt, approximately 15,000 years ago. The discovery of these vases, alongside rough, handmade pottery imitations, further underscores the advanced engineering skills of the ancient Egyptians. Lasers. Definitely lasers. What else could it be? Another day, another fishing in somebody's wall. Let's get rid of some of this. What is this? Oh, tough. Nope. Nope, back in the wall. We just bought a home, and I think somebody may have been schmurdered in it because tonight we had a leak in our laundry room. Well, our laundry room was one of the only places upstairs that had flooring. And because of the leak, we just had to rip out the flooring. And let me show you what we found. First off, you're going to ignore the mess because obviously we're trying to get water up. But um, what is this? There is literal footprints in this stuff. I am freaking out. We had to call the police about what we found hidden in this abandoned house. A caged room only opening from the outside. Another caged room. Lots of chains. Hair. We're up in the crawl space now. Sorry, it's really tight getting back here. And I see this hole. And I decide to look inside to see what's in here, right? And I have a headlamp on right now and my phone light, and I cannot see the bottom. Follow for more. There is a man-made chemical. It repelled the elements, especially water. So they used it to make the first ever waterproof coating for tanks. Then some companies thought, hey, why just a battlefield? Why not bring this chemical into American homes? And they made their own impenetrable coating, but not for tanks, for pans. They called it Teflon. The men and workers who made Teflon were coming down with nausea, fevers. DuPont wanted to know why. So they laced cigarettes with Teflon. Almost all those men were hospitalized. One year after Teflon launched, and already DuPont knew. The dust, they just sent right up the smokestacks, released into the air. The sludge, tossed it into the Ohio, or uh, packed in the drums and, and, and chucked it into the Chesapeake. But they weren't the only ones covering their tracks. 3M, who, who pioneered these chemicals for Scotchgard, they were testing them on monkeys. Most of the monkeys died. They were doing their own tests on rats. Watch the organs balloon. Now the rats are getting cancers. Tested them on pregnant rats and watched them give birth to pups with deformed eyes. So they yanked all the young women off the Teflon line and never told them why. DuPont knew everything. They knew. 
that the C8 they put into the air and buried into the ground for decades was causing cancers. They knew that their own workers were getting these cancers. They knew that the consumers too were being exposed and not just in Teflon, in, in paints, in fabrics, in uh, raincoats, boots, to this day. El Omot, quien se mete conmigo, se seca. Quien se mete con Venezuela, se seca. El Omot. ¿Quieres pelea? Vamos a darle el Omot. Estoy listo. Soy hijo de Bolívar y de Chávez. No te tengo miedo, El Omot. Vamos a darlo, pues. Donde quiera. Como decimos en Caracas, en los barrios. Si tú quieres, yo quiero El Omot. Di dónde. Can anyone confirm if this is what the president actually said? This definitely gives out that hologram feels, do you think? Alright, before we end the video, I would like to take this moment to give thanks to our new subscribers. Special thanks to Amor Catalunya. You guys give me the motivation to continue doing what I'm doing. And I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks everyone for showing up and I will see you around. Oi, amor. Que que é isso? Brenda, que que é isso, mano? Calma, esse senhor. Give me your hot Choice if you want dark spots to disappear from your face. Ha ha ha!